We all know Garmisch, right? It's massively famous for its awesome and quaint small town vibes, the thrilling gorge that we covered in our previous episode, and of course some quirky little museums. But is it the best place to go to get those things? Well, that I don't know. You see, just 20 minutes down the road is the awesome town of Mittenwald complete with those same trappings. But which one should you go to? Well, come with us today because that's what we're going to figure out where we put Garmisch's crown to the test by pitting it head to head against Mittenwald. Let's go. Okay, so we're gonna start in the Munich Hauptbahnhof, like always, and decently early, as the train ride takes about an hour and 50 minutes, and we're gonna want plenty of time to get to know the town to thoroughly compare it to Garmisch-Partenkirchen. Already off to an awkward start, though, because it is gonna be 20 minutes longer on that train there and back, so 40 minutes total, and the trains run a little bit less often, though the route itself isn't confusing or complicated. Simply just take an RB train in the direction of Mittenwald, my recommendation being probably the one at 9.32. That's what I'm gonna take. They leave every hour at the half past, but they do skip some, so always check your timetables. Then sit back, watch a movie, or read a book, because we're going to be on this bad boy for a little while until the end of the line in Mittenwald. All right, so we've just arrived in Mittenwald, and if you know me, and I hope you do by now, I had to resist a pretty heavy urge to not film in that train station. But no, I wanted to show and illustrate the first pro on the Mittenwald versus garmisch partenkirchen comparison, and that's that the town is right up on the train station itself, along with the wonderful mountain looming over you. So the first impressions in terms of like natural beauty and like how nice architecturally Mittenwald is, it hits you right in the face once you get off the train. Whereas in Garmisch, I don't know, you have to walk 10 or 15 minutes either to Garmisch or Partenkirchen for it to really start to look good. Whereas this one looks good immediately. How cool is that? And now, just like me, after that train ride and this beautiful weather, you wanna sit outside and have a coffee, maybe an ice cream, but no, we're gonna earn it. First off, we're gonna go off to the Geigenbaum Museum and learn about Mittenwald's history of violin making. And then after that, we can have an ice cream. <laughs> Let's go. First up today, we're checking out the Geigenbaum Museum, or in English, the Violin Making Museum, which as I'm sure as you can guess, it's gonna be dedicated to the craft of violin making and its development here in Mittenwald. You see, Mittenwald was situated, well, almost perfectly for the distribution of goods between Lower Germany and Northern Italy. Under these fortuitous conditions, enter our hero for the day, Matthias Klotz, the man credited with establishing the tradition of violin making right here. Records are unclear, but it seems like Klotz moved to Italy sometime during his teens to apprentice originally as a lute maker. And after his apprenticeship, Klotz moved back north to Mittenwald to build his lutes. Then the town of Mittenwald proved useful once again. Not only perfectly positioned on the major trade route, but there was no lute makers guild to harsh Matthias's vibes. Though as the lute's popularity waned in the late 17th century, pivoted to violin making. Scholars assume that he'd been making and selling violins well throughout the late 1600s, but he hadn't been putting his name on them. And it wouldn't be until 1704 that he took his stamp out and really claimed the violin as his own. By 1760, violins were in such high demand all over Europe the Klotz had fully expanded and trained up another 11 violin makers in total, all here in Mittenwald. That's too many, if you ask me. And from there, it would just continue to grow. And as the market kept increasing, you would see his well-trained luthiers cast out all over Europe, bringing the traditions of Mittenwald everywhere they went. Pretty cool, huh? And so if you want to visit, well, this adorable exhibition is situated just off the main strip in a beautiful little courtyard. And it's a fantastic way to check out all of these amazing historical instruments and anomalies. Not to mention at five euros fifty per adult, it's an easy recommendation. The history is fascinating, the collection both impressive and selectively curated to make sure it's not too overwhelming. Man, this museum is just simply a must do in my books.
All right, so we just got done at the museum and I gotta say it was just as fun the second time as it was the first. You know, it's very small, compact, highly focused and intrinsically linked with the town itself. You know, when you do travel, a lot of times you'll go to museums that if you transplanted them from one place to another, would it really be that different? Eh, a lot of times they're showing art from other countries anyway, but this place is perfectly linked with Mittenwald. You can't have one without the other. And because it's so small and focused, you don't have to worry about museum fatigue. You're just in there for an hour and then you're done. It's a win-win-win as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, I'm starving now. We held off earlier. Let's go look at the beautiful main street and get some food. So the town centre itself has numerous cafes with copious outdoor seating. And even though, you know, it's kind of the most obvious spot, I do still highly recommend sitting outside here to enjoy the atmosphere. And let's be honest, this quaint town centre has some brilliant vibes. You don't want to miss them. However, there isn't really a lot in terms of really good food. And I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but it's just nothing that I would recommend emphatically. You know what I mean? It's not bad. It's just not amazing. And it can get a little pricey. You know, you are going to be paying for those vibes. Keeping that in mind, my recommendation is that you just go for a coffee and perhaps an ice cream. It's a great way to get the vibes while not spending an arm and a leg. My personal favorite is towards the end of the main road, Cafe Bozna. They have an insane ice cream selection that just won't disappoint you or break the bank, especially if you share one of their bigger ice creams. If you are hungry though, and ice cream won't satisfy, which is an emotion I simply just can't relate to, head a little bit of ways out of town towards the Mittenwald Brewery. They produce their own beer in-house and ship it all over the area, and it's got a pretty good mod modern fair going on. So now we've fully experienced the museum, main streets, and pretty much all the town has to offer, how does it compare to Garmisch Partenkirchen? Well, most obviously, Mittenwald is a lot smaller, but not to its detriment. I've actually found that the quality is condensed and not lost. Plus, in my opinion, the overall landscaping, it's a little nicer. Both towns boast a quirky museum linked to their unique interests as well. Mittenwald, of course, with its violins, and Garmisch with porcelain puppetry. So, you know, I'll call them equal, but my personal personal biases towards the violin museum, your mileage might vary. In regards to food, well, they're about the same in terms of quality and price, but I've yet to find a town with as compelling a main street for casual cafe culture as Mittenwald. So points there. Though on the other hand, Garmisch has far more in the way of shopping and accommodation, but it's up to you whether or not you find that compelling. So overall, my vote's gonna be for Mittenwald, but I wouldn't think any less of you if you looked at all the same stats and came up with Garmisch as your favorite. Now that we're done with the town though, let's check out our last event for the day, Loitash Gorge, and compare it to Garmisch's partner clan. To get there, keep going away from the town via the main road, cutting right just before the bridge to follow along a dirt road against the river's current and towards the mountains from whence it came. Eventually, you'll get to another bridge and beer garden. It's about a kilometer away, and we're gonna start our hike from there. Right, with the ice cream snack taken care of and the walk out here done, you might notice this sign behind me. It's hard to miss, I put it there on purpose, but you also might recognize it. And that's if you've watched my Almob Tube video from God, nigh on a year ago now, we came here to experience the spirit of the mountain in between the cow festival that we were going to. Now that actually costs some money. I mean, you go through a little track and you get to see all the water up front and close, and it was pretty cool. Very similar to the Garmisch Partenkirchen one, but I noted something extra in that video that I just didn't have time to experience. And that were all these hikes that are completely free, which is crazy. And you get to go above the gorge itself. And I think there are a few bridges that you can go to. Now, I know nothing about it, but it wouldn't be fair to compare Mittenwald to Garmisch Partenkirchen and the gorges and the Zugspitze and all that stuff, unless I experienced that and kind of righted the wrong. So I didn't look anything up. I mean, I knew I was gonna do it, so we're gonna go in blind. So come with me now and we go experience the spirit of the mountain for a second time and see if it's any good or if it's any better. Let's go.
And you guys owe me for this one. I'm doing the ending dialogue on the spooky swaying bridge. Uh, it's really not my cup of tea. I mean, maybe for some people out there, you love this stuff. It scares the crap out of me. I mean, when I realized that the grates were gonna be see-through for like two odd kilometers, I almost turned around. And, uh, but now that I've done that, I'm ready to tell you kind of my official opinion. And in all my travels, this is the exact kind of thing I would expect to pay for. If they were charging me 15 euros at the gate for this, I'd probably pay it. Like it's really, really good, but it's completely free. So that's a huge win in my book. And other than that, it's just so well maintained and the views that you get, just they're so wonderful. Anyway, I couldn't rave about this any higher. So is it better than Garmisch Partenkirchen's Partner Clam Gorge? Well, yeah, I'd probably say so. I mean, if you're really looking for that beginner Alm experience that I talked about in my Beneath the Mountains video, which if you haven't watched, I really hope you do, you know, that Alm experience is probably gonna be better near Garmisch, to be honest with you. I think it was. But if you've done that like I have a few times and you're ready for something a bit different, or you're a thrill seeker who just loved those bloody see-through grates, then this is gonna be for you. And it's just so easy to recommend when these things are free, right? You just can't go wrong. And there's a bunch more trails. You can continue out for hours and hours. So I think for the right type of person, this is definitely better. And that type of person might just be me. Anyway, if you've really liked this kind of direct comparison between Garmisch and Mittenwald, then please like and subscribe right now because I have to go to sleep soon so I can wake up early in the morning and ascend the Carvendel Mountain, where I'm gonna figure out if it's better than the Zugspitze, which is a little bit of heresy because that's kind of my most popular video. <laughs> Hopefully people don't get too mad. But for now, I need to finish off this hike. There's still a bit more left to do and I need to get to sleep early. So I'll see you in the conclusion where we answer officially, is Mittenwald better than Garmisch Partenkirchen? Let's go. Hey everybody, we're back in Munich after our trip to Mittenwald. We were comparing that town to the town of garmisch partenkirchen and we were sort of focusing on three different points. We were talking about the local museums, the little town center, and then the gorges that you can hike to in both towns. Now we sort of agree, you know, which one we, we, we like more. So I'm just gonna pass this over to Ben. What sure. Yeah, so obviously I can't speak for you guys on what you'll prefer. And if you've watched our videos on Garmisch and then this one, you probably have a completely different answer than for me or us. But I honestly just prefer Mittenwald. To me, it's actually not that hard. You see, the museums, call me biased, I think violin making and its history in Mittenwald is a little bit more interesting than ceramic puppetry and its influence on the region. I just think the Mittenwald Museum is a bit more local and a bit more historical in that regard. You know, you're kind of looking at his workshop, right? And kind of where it all happened. And I just think that's really cool. I mean, if you've watched my videos, you know I'm a bit of a sucker for living history museums. And this is almost one. Now, of course, we've got the town centers, and this one's a bit of a slam dunk for Mittenwald as well. I think it's just prettier, and I don't really know if there's much argument about that. Along that main street, there's just so many more cafes with open seating that you just don't really get in Garmisch or Mittenwald. They're more focused on shopping and moving you from one store to the next. There's not that many places to sit, whereas in Mittenwald, that feels like the only thing you can do. So if you're into that, which I am, you're gonna prefer Mittenwald. And of course, we come up to the last piece, which is the gorges. And again, very polarizing. I think you might already know which one you prefer. And kind of Mittenwald, it's not really for everybody, right? Kind of doing one of those catwalk hikes along strapped onto the gorge like that. That's really weird. You've got nothing below you. It can kind of freak you out. And that's why I like it more. It's kind of driving a hard line for what it wants to be. And it's not for everybody, but for the people who do love it, it's fantastic. And the fact that it's free, man, that just can't really be beat, can it? Whereas when you compare that to the Partner Clam Gorge, it's kind of more of a generalist, right? It's more of a people pleaser. You've got a pretty good gorge. You've got a pretty good hike. You've got a pretty good arm to go get a beer at, but you can get all those things in other places. So if you're not very choosy and you just kind of want all three, go to Garmisch, you'll have a great time. But if you're looking at this saying, oh, that's a unique experience that I want to have, I'll get beer later, then you've got to go for Mittenwald. And so that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, so I think that was a pretty good summation. But the astute among you will, will be wondering, hmm, what about the two mountain peaks? There's the famous Zugspitze in Garmisch Partenkirchen, actually our most popular video is a video about that. And then in Mittenwald, you have the Karvendelspitze. Well, if you're interested in that, please like, comment, and subscribe because our next video is going to be comparing those two peaks. And maybe it'll even change your opinion about which you feel more strongly about, Mittenwald or Garmisch Partenkirchen. Yeah, they're very different mountains. Mm -hmm. But that's about it for now, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.